So we've been using polynomials to approximate more complicated functions. Now you could use a polynomial to approximate a polynomial and you could get it perfect. But some of these other functions, like some of the rational functions, the sine function, the cosine function, e to the x, if I want to approximate them with a polynomial, I need an infinitely long polynomial. The more terms I use, the better my approximation is going to get, the closer and closer to the actual value. But well, if I have a geometric series, then I can use that little formula, the sum is the first term divided by 1 minus r, to get an exact new function. But most of the time I'm not going to be able to do that. Most of the time my series is not going to be geometric, which means I'm going to need infinitely many terms in my polynomial to approximate the function exactly. And since I'm not going to use infinitely many terms, I have to think about how big, how bad would the error be when I cut off my polynomial after some certain number of terms. So this is called Taylor's Theorem. Really what it says is that if you decide to use n terms in a Taylor polynomial, you can get an approximation for the function f evaluated as certain value, so f of x is equal to the Taylor polynomial you use the first n terms, plus some remainder. So that remainder is going to be the difference between the real value and the approximation you're going to get. And it turns out that we can relate that remainder, the error, to the next derivative, the next order derivative after the order that you used to make the last term of the part of the polynomial that you kept. So this expression we call that r of x, it's the nth order remainder or the nth order error term. It looks exactly like what the next term in the series would have been, except for right here. Instead of having the nth derivative of f at a, like all the other terms had, this is the nth derivative of f at some c value between x and a. What this really does for us is, if we can find out the maximum value of the next derivative, the derivative we would have used to figure out the next term, then we can put a bound, we can put a limit on the error and say, okay, the worst my error is, is some value. So you've seen some problems in your free response section where they're asking you to find some limit on the error. So this is the process we're going to use. This is what's probably going to end up being more useful to you. This is uh, Taylor's inequality, and it says the absolute value of the error. So we're not going to worry about whether our error is positive or negative. The absolute value of the error is less than or equal to what really would have been the next term in the Taylor series after the last term you used before you cut off your polynomial. Notice that one difference is x minus a is going to go in absolute value bars instead of just parentheses and that f to the n plus the n plus 1 derivative of f at c we're just going to replace that with the maximum value of the next derivative so if you use the fifth order taylor polynomial that means you use the fifth derivative of f to get it and you had x minus a to the fifth power in that last term then the error term is based on the sixth derivative and what you're going to do is try to figure out the worst the biggest the yeah the maximum value of the sixth derivative anywhere on the interval between a and x so we're going to do an example from your textbook like this one okay so some things to notice here we're going to try to put a limit on say what's the worst possible error we could get if we use this second order Taylor polynomial, x minus x squared over 2, to find an approximation of a not polynomial function, natural log of 1 plus x. So remember, we discovered this um, Taylor series for natural log of 1 plus x, I think back in 9.1. They're telling us x is small. They're going to say, actually, specifically, x is going to be less than, well, between negative point 
one and positive 0.1. So some things to notice here, we'll remember from the, when we got this approximating polynomial that that was centered around x equals zero. So that means a is zero in this problem. The polynomial we're gonna use is a second degree Taylor polynomial. That means n is two. Other things we need to know, well, that's kind of what we need to know. Okay, so what we're gonna have to figure out to use this polynomial is what m is. So here's a notation that they kind of use in the scoring guidelines that they publish. We want the max between negative 0.1 of the n plus 1th derivative, so the f, in this case, f triple prime of x. There are a couple ways to go about this. Sometimes we'll already know this third derivative. Sometimes on the AP test, they'll give you information about the derivatives and whether they're increasing or decreasing. Uh, just know that I could figure, if this is f of x is natural log of 1 plus x, I could figure out all these derivatives. So I just figured out the first three derivatives of f. What's really interesting is when I figure out the fourth derivative of f, that's going to be negative 6 over 1 plus x to the fourth. And what I want to notice here is that no matter what x is, that denominator is going to be positive, the numerator is going to be negative, so I can conclude that the fourth derivative of x is negative. That tells me that the third derivative of f is decreasing. So since I want the maximum value of the third derivative of f, and the third derivative of f is decreasing, its maximum value occurs at its leftmost endpoint. So I'm going to use the leftmost endpoint of that interval, which in this case is negative 0.1. So I'm going to find f triple prime of negative 0.1. So once I decide that f, the biggest, because, right, the biggest that f triple prime could equal on the interval negative one, negative point one to positive point one, is two over point nine cubed, which I simplified here. This is my m value. So now I know my m. I know n equaled two and a equaled zero. I'm just gonna fill in this formula. All right, so this is my answer, which you might or might not choose to simplify. I have the, ab the absolute value of the error, if I only use two terms to approximate f of x, is less than or equal to, what I have here is m, so 2 over 0.729, times this n plus 1 factorial in the denominator. I'm writing that here as 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Remember we said n is 2, so n plus 1 is 3. This is 1 over 3 factorial, times the difference between x and and a. I was promised that the absolute that um, x was between negative point one and positive point one, and a is zero. So the biggest that could be is point one. It could be point one. It could be negative point one. But I have absolute value bars here, so I've just filled in point one, and that's going to get raised to the n plus one power, so raised to the third power. This is an excellent answer. Gets full credit. You could also simplify if you prefer.